we know that all reactants will have a certain amount of energy as a result of the bonds that they have formed. So in this example that we have here, our reactants are nitrogen and oxygen, and they have a certain energy as a result of their bonds. We also know that in order for a reaction to happen by collision theory, those two particles must collide with each other. We know that we have our two nitrogen atoms that form a molecule and our two oxygen atoms that form a molecule. We know that in order for them to react with each other, they must collide with each other. They must also collide in the correct orientation that allows the possibility of new bonds to form. We know that there's a certain amount of energy that is required in order for that to take place. We know that that amount of energy is known as the activation energy, the amount of energy required for a reaction to start. Now, in an endothermic reaction, we will find that the products that are formed have a higher potential energy than the reactant. So the product here, nitrogen monoxide, as we can see, has a higher potential energy than our reactants. What this means is that there is now energy that needs to be absorbed in order for us to go from our reactants to the products. A certain amount of energy is required. We call that the enthalpy. Once again, the enthalpy is the heat of the reaction. And what this is telling us is that in every reaction that happens, a certain amount of heat is taken in in order to form nitrogen monoxide. So we say that the enthalpy change is positive. In this case, the enthalpy change is 180.5 kilojoules per mole. And what that means is that this reaction is constantly absorbing energy from the environment, which means that the environment cools down. So we say endothermic reactions are defined by a positive enthalpy and a cooling down of the reaction mixture. What we can also see here is that we can demonstrate the effect of a catalyst on this reaction. So we know that a catalyst is one of the few changes to a reaction that changes the rate without changing the number of total collisions. What the catalyst does is it provides an alternate path in order for this reaction to happen. So as we can see, the activation energy for the catalyst, we say the catalyzed activation energy, is less than the original activation energy, meaning that less energy is required for this reaction to happen, which makes the reaction happen easier or faster or more successfully. What we can also introduce here is the concept of a reversible reaction. What this says to us is that although the forward reaction here, where nitrogen reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide, is endothermic, the reverse reaction in which nitrogen monoxide breaks apart to form nitrogen and oxygen again would obviously then be exothermic because we are then reading the graph from the other side. So for any reversible reaction, if the forward reaction is endothermic, the reverse reaction would be exothermic and vice versa.